Hey guys, what's up? Avi here and welcome back to the Codex. In this video, we're finalizing our weather dashboard in Flask and we're gonna beautify our current platform, which is a bit rustic, and make it look nice and pretty like the final demo that we had. And so we'll essentially be adding some custom CSS files to the templates in Flask and just beautifying the code in general. Let's dive right in. First thing first, let's go to our templates folder. And inside right now, our home.html and results.html both don't have custom CSS files. So how can we add that in Flask? Well, first thing first, we actually need to create a static folder in our Flask directory. So create a directory called a static, and inside of this directory will lie all of our static files. So CSS, SCSS, JS, etc. If you had any static files like images and stuff, they would all lie in static. Inside of this, create a new directory called styles, and inside of styles, create a new CSS file, style sheet, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this for now, home.css. So this home.css file will correspond to our home.html style sheet. But how do we import this home.css inside of our home.html page? Inside of the head tag, what I want you to go ahead and do is specify how you normally do it. You'd say link rel equals style sheet, you would say type equals text slash CSS. And again, if you're a web developer, you already know this. This is common, common syntax. However, the one thing that will be different is your href. Where does your style sheet actually live? And that again is where we're gonna use the URL for syntax that we saw in Jinja 2. We're gonna say that we're specifying the URL for static, but the file name here is going to be style slash home.css. This is standard kind of um, syntax for creating your href for custom CSS files. And that will go ahead and add our home.css file to this page. So if I go ahead and minimize this just a bit so it's visual and everyone can see this, I have over here my link rel equals style sheet, type equals text slash CSS, and my href is equal to URL4 specifying my static folder. And inside of that, I'm passing in an attribute file name is equal to style slash home.css. Awesome. And now let's go ahead and close this link tag and we're good to go. And now I can start adding custom styles to my home.css. Now, as a good HTML developer or web developer should always do, we should add custom classes and IDs to our code. So here I'm gonna go ahead and add a custom ID to my form. I'm gonna say ID is equal weather form. And my inputs and everything should also have custom IDs as well. I'm gonna say ID equals weather input. And over here, my input ID equals weather submit. And there are multiple ways to do this. I don't think there is um, a best way for adding style sheets to HTML code. Mine may not be the most efficient, but this is just one way that I've learned and I've been using for some time. So here I have an H2 tag, weather dashboard and flask. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do actually is I know for a fact that all of my kind of text, my location zip code, my weather form, all that stuff, it's gonna have the same font size and everything. So here I'm gonna say my H2 class, font family for now, we're gonna say sans serif. We'll go ahead and update that later from Google Fonts. My font size will be 24 pixels and my padding left for now will be 20 pixels, okay? And then after that, I have my weather form ID. So this again is kind of like the overall hierarchy container of my form. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy kind of like the same code over here. Font family, font size padding, except here I'm gonna say padding is 20 pixels. Now I could make this more efficient by specifying a class for each one of the attributes where I have the same text. So I'm gonna call this weather text, okay? I'm gonna add this class weather text. I'm gonna add this class over here, weather text, add it over here to this input, add it over here to this input. And for all four of these now, rather than making this uber specific, I can actually just create a simple class dot weather text. And inside of this mention these two properties. And now I don't have to go through the trouble of adding in font family and font size for every attribute that I created. So right now, let's just go ahead and save this and see what this looks like. So go ahead and save, go back to app.py and let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. So debug mode is off, let's open this up. And this is our current site and this looks pretty nice. Let me refresh actually. Um, okay, so what's happening right now is that I actually haven't added any of this stuff, but it hasn't loaded my new home.css file in this new project. And there are two ways to go about doing this or fix this issue. 
If you're using Chrome, I would say go to inspect and then inside of inspect, you'll see an option called network and an option to disable cache. Disable cache will make sure that the CSS files get renewed every single time. And now by disabling that cache, if I refresh, I'll see that this is what it actually looks like. The text is a little bit more in the air. It looks a bit more pretty, but my font family and the background color have not been changed. Another way to do this, if you're not using Chrome, is to go to view page source, click on static styles home.css and manually refresh this page. And this will go ahead and update the CSS for your web page. Again, this is a problem with development and not just Flask, but web development in general, where the style sheet of your web page will not automatically update because your browser will cache it to save network resources. In this case, we're manually refreshing the page and that way we'll always get the latest version. So without further ado, let me go ahead and modify the submit button to follow kind of the syntax that we had from before. So going to home.css over here, I'm gonna go ahead and specify my weather submit button to have a color of white, a background color of, and in kind of PyCharm, I have these predefined values, but I'll use FA8072, 8072. This is again, salmon. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some like nice, nice looking features. So I'll give it a padding of five pixels left, right, and 20 pixels top bottom. I'll give it a border radius of five pixels. This will make it look nice and rounded. And then I'll give it a margin top of 20 pixels. So these are again, some custom CSS values. Um, if you know web development, hopefully this is straightforward. Otherwise just play around with this. There's a lot of different values and customizations you can do. I'm essentially just modifying some key properties of the button. And so now if I go back and I refresh, my submit button looks kind of like this, a little bit more prettier. Now what I wanna go ahead and do guys is add a custom font. So I'm gonna to go to fonts.google.com and I really like the font Leto. So I'm gonna search for Leto, click this, and I'm gonna select the fonts that I want. So I want the regular font, select the style, and I want the bold font, select this style. And on the right-hand side of the screen, I had noticed this embed option. I'm gonna click embed, and I'm gonna copy this exact link over here back in PyCharm in home.html. So right underneath where I imported my style sheet, I'm gonna paste this Google Fonts API link and this will allow me to use the custom Google font in my project. So now if I go back to home.css, I can specify font family is now Leto comma sans serif. And actually I should be doing this not here, but inside of my weather text. So there we go, save, go back over here to my web page, which is this one, refresh. And look at that, my font now looks so much better. So we just redesigned the first view, home.css. I can put in a zip code, hit submit, and my results page looks kind of bad. So as a challenge, go ahead and pause this video and try adding your own custom CSS file and beautifying the results page. Pause this video, I'll wait three seconds, and then I'll go ahead and do it in case you get lost. Okay, awesome. So hopefully your results page now looks something very pretty and very beautiful. And if it doesn't, don't worry. This is a learning process as a project we're building and growing together. So in our results page, let's go ahead and do something very similar. Let's create a new style sheet. We're gonna say over here, um, result or results.css, there we go. And inside of our results.css, first thing first, we need to import it in the results.html. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this exact same code, paste it in head, and change up the name to be results.css instead of home.css. And then I'm gonna go ahead and import my kind of Google fonts again. I don't think I have to do this, but it's just good practice. Normally you would import this in like some higher arching containers. So you don't have to import it in every web page, but there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and call the title of this results page, make sure that this looks good. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is give this div an ID. And this div, I'm gonna give an ID and call it weather results, weather results. And I'm gonna modify this so that my text is centered, has a background color and it looks a bit more pretty. So going to my results.css, I can refer to the ID by saying weather results using a hashtag. So again, hashtag is for IDs, periods are for classes. That's a key thing to remember while web development with CSS. And inside of this, I'm gonna go ahead and just like run through a bunch of different things. So background color, again, I'm gonna go the salmon color. So it's what FA8072. 
And then after that, I'm gonna say my font family should be the exact same I had in the other page, Leto, comma, sans serif. After that, I wanna set my font size to be 24 pixels. I want my padding to be 20 pixels. So this again is like adding some more space between the container and the content. I want to display this as inline block so that it doesn't extend all the way across the screen. I'm gonna align my text to be center. I'm gonna give my margin, this block, 20 pixels. And I'm gonna give the border radius of this container 10 pixels. Now I could break down and explain each one of these, but that's not the point of this project. The point was to use Flask and learn about APIs. This web development stuff, I'm sure you can pick up on your own through online resources. So go ahead and save this, refresh, and okay, nothing has been updated yet, but what if that's not our fault? The reason being is because we need to actually rerun app.py. App.py has no idea that this new results.css has been added. So go ahead and control C and rerun this. Go back to our web page over here, hit submit, and look at that. Now I have this beautiful block, weather in San Jose. I have my Fahrenheit temperature. I have what it feels like and, or what the weather conditions are and what it feels like. And this honestly looks great. So congratulations guys, you just made your very own weather dashboard. And the last thing I wanna modify here is that when I hover on the submit button, I wanna turn my cursor into a pointer. So go ahead and add that one small edit. If we go to home.css in weather submit, we're gonna go ahead and say over here, weather submit colon hover cursor is going to be a pointer. Awesome job, let's refresh. And now if I hover, you can notice that very small discrete change of my pointer going from a click to, sorry, from like a normal pointer to a click cursor. Anyways, fantastic job. In this project, in these past couple of videos, we learned how to use APIs in Python, how to create our own dashboard in Flask and send data from one route to another and tie all this in together into a beautiful UI. Now you can go to your local host, type in a zip code of where you live or where your friend lives, hit submit, and then see the results of that weather in your results page. That's it for this project, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, please, 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 Drop a note in our community. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. But again, I hope you learned something and I look forward to seeing you in one of our future projects. Thanks so much, guys.